I realized that one of the major impediments to folks uh, building either the buzzboard or the buzzboard gloves is the soldering involved. And uh, I, I know people are put off by soldering. Uh, it, I think it's got a lot more mystery to it than reality uh, if you jump in. But nonetheless, um, there was a suggestion on the channel of these Wirefly connectors. Uh, there's also a, an inexpensive Chinese version of the same. Um, and, and these I've tried a couple of times and seem to work quite well. Uh, take a little bit of finesse and, and we'll get through that. The, uh, the primary issue I ran into with these, if you look very small here, it says uh, 2624 AWG. AWG is American Wire Gauge. It's a wire sizing. Uh, the higher the number, the smaller the wire. Now that works okay for the wire that we use to connect the fingers because those are 24, 26 AWG, uh, and that works out just fine. However, on the motors, this is the um, Vibronics motor. This is the more expensive one. Um, you see these wires on the end are, are quite small, 30 or even 32 gauge. I'm sure they're metric, but um, so much smaller than is rated for the device. If you want to go with the inexpensive Amazon motors, uh, you'll see the while the motor itself is bigger, uh, the wires are the same size. So I uh, spent a little time figuring out how to get this to work, uh, to put together a, a buzz board. I'm hoping that I can get this magnified enough that it is actually visible of what's going on here. Um, but what this connector allows you to do is it allows you to, let me get this a little more centered. Um, it allows you to heat shrink instead of solder. And the construct of this guy is on each end there's a white ring and that white ring is a piece of plastic that melts uh, under heat from the heat gun to secure the, the jacket of the wire to keep it from pulling out and in the center is a little silver band of solder. And the way these things are supposed to work is, get myself a little extra, you slide your wire all the way through, you take the wire that you wanna connect, you wind them together, you slide it back to the center, and you make your connection. Nice. The problem is, of course, that this little guy is not long enough, he's never gonna get through there. In fact, if I bring one of these up and I put the wire into it, I hope you can see that. He basically just makes it to the center a little bit past, okay? So that's a problem on how to approach these things. The other problem is getting enough mechanical support that they are going to be able to stay in there once we put them in. Because um, if they pull out all the time, you know, vibration is, is tough on a connection, as is uh, the movement in a glove. So that becomes an issue. So what I've done is this. I've taken the motor and I have taken a tiny piece of heat shrink. I believe this is 16 in, 16th of an inch. I've cut it so that it just slides over and leaves the conductor exposed at the end. Now what this is doing is it's making that little 30 gauge wire thick enough that that connector can grab it, okay? Because we wanna make sure we've got enough mechanical support to not pull out. Still using my uh, helping hands here. And now I'm gonna take this guy, I'm gonna slide him in 
until the conductor is overlapping with my finger wire. Would help if I had the right wire in place, because if I go red to blue, I'm gonna get these things wired backwards. Uh, interestingly, the, the Vibronics motors are, are really sensitive to being wired backwards. The, the Amazon motors don't seem to mind so much, but anyway. So now I have the heat shrink on the motor, I've got enough of the conductor exposed. The conductor overlaps with this stripped conductor of the black wire here, because I'm connected to blue on this Vibronics. And then of course the two white pieces. And now all I have to do to get this connected is hit it with a heat pump. And you will see it heat shrinks right down nice and tight. If you look carefully, you can see that solder becoming shiny in there. And make sure you get all the way around it, on all sides. And if I did my job right, I now have the black conductor of a finger, no solder. So this is one that I've already completed. Now for these Vibronics motors, they are about the same size as these two pieces of the solder wirefly solder seal connectors. And so I can run a single piece of heat shrink over them to create the finger. And I thought I had a piece guy. Here we are. So I have a piece of heat shrink. I'm going to take both ends of this through. Now, just a side note, you'll see I've got these stripped already. Uh, I've gotten to where, particularly with this, but also with soldering, before I, uh, I get too far with assembly, I actually touch them to uh, um, an Arduino a setup so that I can test them. But anyway, so you'll see that slides right over. And then just as on the solder fingers, it comes right out over. Okay. This one I've actually already tested and has good connectivity. And then I'm going to heat shrink down. that is a, a no solder finger or motor uh, for the buzz board or the buzz board, the motor shield gloves, the microcontroller gloves. They're functionally the same, but again, those two heat shrinks are in here. Now, if you're using the Amazon motor, it's only slightly different. So I am going to uh, stop the video and complete one of these, um, and then I'll do one for the the Amazon inexpensive motors. Okay, so this is the continuation of that previous one. Interestingly, um, this particular piece is so small that it does not allow me to put that piece of heat shrink in. So I am gonna try this just straight on and uh, see how good a mechanical. So again, you see I've got the, the conductor over, they are overlapping. I can push it in properly and then heat shrink. And there is another one until we're heat shrink down. Now in this case, the red did not get that piece. It appears to have a pretty good mechanical hold. 
Um, you see I did a, made sure I really got a good melt on that plastic. Um, as I, I said earlier, I'm gonna continue to, to solder. Um, I like to solder, I think it's a better joint. Uh, but certainly these are, are solid tool, they give a good mechanical. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is, is show putting one of these together with the Amazon motor. The only thing that's different is you're gonna need an extra piece of heat shrink to build it up because the motor head is larger. So let's get to that. Okay, so slide this guy over. What I've done on the last couple, and again, I have not done many of these, but I'm actually grabbing where the wire comes right onto, or goes into this connector. That way it doesn't move as much on me uh, when I'm pushing from the other side with this motor. And let's see which manufacturing tolerance we got on this one. Okay, this one is allowing me to get in there. So again, good overlap. Bring in my other magnifier to make sure I'm getting a good connection. Okay, good overlap on that piece of solder, and we're gonna hit it with heat, the heat gun. Red to red, black to black. Again, same drill, right up against it. Find myself a piece of tiny heat shrink here. Cut it so that I can just have that end exposed. So I wanna make sure that I've got enough material there for this thing to grab on. That's gonna keep it from pulling out too easily. But obviously, if I cover the conductor or the conductor on the end of that wire, I will not get an electrical connection, and that will not be good. Okay, so get it in so we're overlapping. There where <clears throat> that solder is, and hit it with a heat gun. Again, you can see that solder flow as it melts under the heat gun and make sure we get that those white thing good and melted because that's what's giving us our pull out strength and there is a low cost motor finger now the heat shrink on this is going to be slightly different and the reason is because that motor size is larger so i am going to Slide my 3 16th heat shrink, and that's going to come down, but it's not going to go over the motor. See it? Which means I'm going to have to get the next size larger. Just like in the other videos, I'm going to slide it over sure that the motor's all the way in there. The reason for the two pieces of heat shrink is to make sure I get a good mechanical. We don't want that motor flopping around. The first one of these I built, I didn't have, first couple, didn't have good mechanical strength. Uh, the wires are so small and the solder joint's so small on that motor, they come off with the vibration. And we don't want that happening. We're gonna end up building a lot of motors. So we're gonna heat shrink this down. There is a no solder Amazon motor 
finger. And here is the vibronics motor. So, as I said, I'm everything I'm building now, I'm building with the more expensive motors. I've, I've had the first couple batches of the, the Amazon motors I got, I did pretty well with. Then I got a batch that they were failing a lot. Um, so that's where I am. But that gives you a mechanism by which you can, with the motor shield and the buzz board, you can build a glove entirely without soldering. So hopefully that uh, takes away an impediment to the broader adoption. Um, the usual uh, qualifier, uh, this is something that I have put together for my wife. She's gotten great relief from it. A number of others have gotten relief. Uh, I, I am not a medical professional. I am not a neurologist. I do not claim that this has any usefulness for anything at all. Uh, your mileage may and very likely will vary. Uh, as I have been uh, saying recently, that Parkinson's truly is the, the forest gump disease. Parkinson's is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, and that's a daily experience. But this technology has substantively helped my wife. Um, best of luck, blessings, and uh, hope it helps you.